Hieroglyphics, anyone? We're going to get into the foreign language of statistical advantage. And I use the metaphor or simile of hieroglyphics in foreign language because this will be to some of you a foreign language. Having said all that, this is truly just math. Now, I give a warning that it's math, but to me, this is not high-level math, but there is some math involved. The math I'm talking about is based on formulas. The formula we're going to be talking about is a Nobel Prize winning formula. It was written by Myron Scholes and Fisher Black in the early 1970s, and they won the 1997 Nobel Prize for Economics. And this formula prices options. And the penny priced option course is on buying and selling options. We are looking for statistical advantages. We are looking for an edge. And we find that edge by knowing this formula and knowing it well. So it's not really math we're getting into. It's details. And I know some people don't like minutia. They don't like excess little bits of information. But it's these little bits of information that allow us to trade profitably consistently. Now, before we get into the new material, I want to review prior material. Now again, if you've traded options for some time, a lot of this is going to be, yeah, duh. I already knew that. Tell me something I don't already know. Well, I'd like to think that there is some new material in all the details. And again, if you've never traded an option before, you might have to watch this section two or three times to fully absorb it. What we're trying to do is to internalize this material to use it for our advantage. Understand the cost of an option is known as the premium. It's my premise that the premiums are less representing the value of the company or the value of the, the stock or the value of the potential movement, and they're more representative of the psychology, right? the fear and greed the market has placed on this particular option at this particular time. Now understand when we buy an option, somebody has to sell it to us. And that will either be another trader or possibly a market maker. Since you're a trader, you can imagine someone sitting at a computer like you are making a decision and making a trade. And albeit they're going to take the opposite side of you, I want to focus more on market makers to start. Now, market makers make their living buying and selling options. Uh, they typically have a seat on the exchange, whether they're actually on the exchange or not. And they offer liquidity. They make a bid-ask spread. They're willing to buy from us at bid. They're willing to sell to us at ask. They're trying to make the difference between bid and ask. Now, market makers try not to take on extra risk by doing this. And they use a very simple formula, which I abbreviate as C equals S plus P, um, C standing for call, S standing for stock, and P standing for put. Understand that in a mathematical formula, to do something to one side of the equation, you have to do equal action to the opposite side of the equation to remain in balance. And so a call equals a stock plus put. If we were to remove put from the right, we would need to remove put from the left. So a call minus a put equals the stock. It's a synthetic equivalent. You don't need to know much about it other than the market makers use to hedge themselves. Let's continue. What does a market maker do? They make this bid-ask spread, and it's based on these formulas. And the formulas have all sorts of details. And so we're going to get into some of these details. And again, I, I say it's the necessary evil to internalize the tactics. If, if you can understand this rather well, you will make money rather well. If you can understand this very, very well, you'll make very, very good money. Now, it's not necessary to know it. It's so useful. We have a system that's based on the ramification of these details. And so as opposed to presenting to you a black box system and asking you 
to trust us, I'm going to go into the details. The first thing on the details I want some, you to know is that this is not something that we've created ourselves. This is something the marketplace understands, and albeit we might have a slightly different spin on on the material and the understanding of it, it's still something that if you were to go out on your own, you can find some of this information. It's not the information we make money on, it's the ramifications of that information and the use of, we're going to start by mentioning the Greeks. There are five Greeks to option pricing. There's Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, and Rho. Right, my famous joke is that Vega is not a Greek, it's a Chevrolet. Now that you're done laughing, uh, let's get into these things. And, and specifically, each one of them deals with a certain aspect. Now, I like to say, since there are five Greeks, that any position we have has a Greek footprint. And the five Greeks represent one of the toes. Right? Delta is the price. Gamma is the price movement, theta is the time, vega the volatility, and rho is the cost of money. Now we're going to look at each of these Greeks, but a couple of them are bunched together. And so we're going to start by looking at how the price and price movement of the stock affects the Greeks. Those Greeks are delta and gamma. I call these the price components. Now you cannot understand gamma if you do not understand delta. Therefore we're going to start with delta. Now there are three ways of looking at delta. Change, summation, and probability. Let's look at change first. Delta as change. When a stock moves in price, the options will move in price. And the, the movement of an option is at a mathematical relationship. This mathematical relationship is known as the delta. So it's the movement of the option compared to the movement of a stock. I like to think of it as the speed. Now, delta is directional. And calls will be measured in a positive delta. Puts will be measured in a negative delta. Now, I'm going to go over some of this stuff fast, tying it all together and make it all make sense. We first start by dumping the information on you. And again, someone that's traded options for a while, they might already know this. I guarantee you. Everybody's going to learn something. But calls have positive deltas, puts have negative deltas. A definition of delta as change would be the dollar amount an option will move relative to a one point upward move of the underlying issue. Now I've seen the definition of delta saying the, um, the amount an option will move relative to one dollar move of the underlying issue. I've seen the rate an option will move relative to a $1 move of the underlying issue. Those might be correct, but this is more correct. And when we trade, we want to be more right than just right. So let's, I'm going to take a little time here and read this and tell you why this is more correct. First of all, the dollar amount an option will move. Well, you're going to see in a slide or two that deltas are, are measured as a decimal, and so if a stock moves a dollar, an option that has a delta of 0 0.50 is going to move half the dollar. So it's an amount, not a rate, because a rate of 0 0.50 would make you think that the option is going to move half of what the option price is. So it is an amount, not a rate. It is relative to a one-point upward move of the underlying issue, not to an one-point move. And that's because I mentioned earlier, calls have positive deltas and puts have negative deltas. And so we need this extra bit of information. All right, let me, let me get into the details of the details. Deltas are measured as a number and a percentage. You'll see them both ways. You might see delta 0.50 equals 50%. Again, I don't like it when someone says 50%. To me, it's not a rate, it's an amount. I'm just making you aware of how the market presents the information, and quite often, the market will present the information incorrectly, maybe less correctly. And again, my, 
my point is that if your premise is wrong and your conclusion is right, you got lucky. We want our premise to be right and therefore our conclusion to be right, and we want to consistently and constantly churn out revenue, churn out income because we have the details correct. Since there are 100 shares per contract, a delta of 0 0.50 is going to move 50. I basically drop the decimal because there's 100 shares per contract. I'm laying the information now, and I'll share the ramifications as we go. More interesting facts about delta. An in-the-money option, right, an option that has intrinsic value, will have higher deltas than at-the-money and out-of-the-money options. And therefore, out-of-the-money options will have lower deltas. The at-the-money option typically always has a delta of roughly 50 plus or minus. Not always, but pretty close. We showed you deltas as a movement of the stock, right? If the stock moves a dollar and the delta is 0 0.50, it's going to move 50 cents. If the stock moves a dollar and the option has a delta of 0.25, that option is going to move 25 cents. That's delta has changed. Now I want to look at collective deltas, right? Where that deltas represent your positional value. Understand that a stock moves dollar for dollar with itself. And if a stock moves dollar for dollar with itself, its delta is 100 or, or 1.00. A stock has a delta. Options have deltas. The deltas on options are different from each other. And so if we have a position with stock and options or a group of different options, we can add all their deltas together and tell us what the value is in relationship to a certain number of shares. We call this the delta value. Continuing with some details on deltas. Longer term options have the deltas closer to 50, which means the stock, when it moves, that option is going to move roughly 50 cents per dollar, or, or more or less, depending on whether it's in the money or out of the money but it's always going to be close to 50. Now these moves, as time pass, get towards the extremes, meaning an out-of-the-money option is going to have a delta closer to zero, and an in-the-money option is going to have a closer delta closer to 100. And this little detail, this factoid, this minutia, is one of the things that make penny-priced options such a great deal. We look to buy an option with a very low delta, get the move our direction, and sell it with a very high delta. Another way of looking at deltas is a point of relativism, right? to compare one to another. We think of the relative value, there's a cumulative value, and an ability to compare positions. So example, if I have X amount of money, and I can buy 200 shares of stock, I'm going to get 200 deltas because each stock moves $1, or each share moves $1 as the stock moves $1. So if the stock moves up $3, my 200 shares of stock is going to move up $600. Now, I could buy a group of options that have a delta that add up to 200. And if the stock moves the same $3, I'm going to make the same $600. The nice thing is, the deltas cost less buying an option versus buying stock. Again, we can add them all up, get a summation, the, the cumulative value, and then we can compare one position to another. Now, there is a way of trading called delta neutral. This is where you take a position of either stock with options or, or options that when you add the positions together, their deltas total zero. We have a section in the course on straddles and strangles. And here's a little bit of information that when you get to it, if a put has a negative delta and a call has a positive delta, if they're both at 50, plus 50 and minus 50 equals zero, they would call it delta neutral. I like to call it delta zero because that's what it is, because it's not necessarily a neutral position because the stock can move one way or another and the deltas change. So understand that delta is the movement of 
an option as a dollar amount percentage of a dollar move of the stock and the in the money options have a much higher delta they have a much higher cost than an out of the money option if you're wrong on the direction if you buy a call and the stock goes down and you bought an in the money call you're going to lose a high percentage of the stock's price movement 